everybody, my next guest is a longtime Broadway actor who hit the big time when he joined the cast of Sex and the City last season. Please welcome Evan Handler. Very nice to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. You yes. know, I missed I missed the Lisa Marie Presley thing. It was I didn't, cool I having her. Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask you about something. Daily News poll yes. comes out. Yes, it And did. they're always right. And they do a poll about men on sex in the city. Right. I didn't see the results. How did you fare? You know, there was good news and there was bad news, is how it went. The good news was I came in ahead of the two characters uh, representing uh, erectile dysfunction and infidelity. <laughs> So it, nice. it, it wasn't all bad. But yeah, I came in six out of eight guys. You know, they supposedly, they supposedly brought 15 young women from New York together and showed them, I don't know if it was some footage or some photographs, and asked them, you, you, none of them apparently wanted to sleep with me, was, was, the, was the upshot. But that's kind of rough, because you're up against those, those Sex in the City hunks that they bring in. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Um, but, <laughs> but, Am I but boring you? Yeah, yeah! <laughs> there was a photograph of four of these supposed women and I had already slept with three of them. Oh, that's not true. It is true, actually. It is, yeah, really? They're the, they're the only three women I've ever slept with. And was, right, and they were know, all brought together? 15 years ago. That's but, incredible. Yeah. Yes. That, but it, it was, was all three of them at once, so, what, you, you know. Very nice. Something there. Very nice. Boy, that woman in the audience left a long time ago. <laughs> this is getting too horrible. Now, Sex and the City, very popular show. You get on this show, you have a pretty prominent role now. Getting recognized a lot in public because I am, and it's kind of fun and sometimes kind of disturbing. I mean, actually, just it happened just a couple of days ago. I was in the supermarket, and this very lithe, attractive young woman, I mean, maybe 21 years old, right. um, she turns and said, hi, hi. And she turned to her friend, she was like, look, look who it is, look who it is. And I realized the one item I had come in to buy under my arm like this was an economy pack of 12 rolls of toilet paper. Oh, the kind where it's like literally just giant, giant. It's, I love... It's a, it's a huge brick. There's no way to paper. walk with that with your dignity. There's no way. <laughs> there's, and there's certainly no way to chat with a fan holding it uh, with your dignity. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking, look, everybody uses the stuff, right? Or you hope everybody uses the stuff. Right. <laughs> But you still, you don't want to chat with the fan while holding it. Now, the other thing is weird is I, about that is that I, whenever I'm in the supermarket, I never realize why they put so many rolls. Like, they have, like, 36 rolls jammed together right. in one giant thing that you have to walk around carrying. It's so people who are recognizable don't have to run into fans very often while buying it. I see. Is the I see. I was it... just, I was grateful I don't yet shop for Depends. Because <laughs> you don't want to be seeing the young That's ladies right. holding that. That's right. I, I, I send an assistant to buy those for me. Right. You just say it's for someone else. That's all you say. I should have thought of that. Yeah. See, I'm smart. I get out there, I see the fans, I know how to react. <laughs> I have a few fans. <laughs> um, now, you're not married yet, is that right? I'm not married, no. I have a girlfriend, though. She's a, a, a beautiful biochemist from Bologna. Um, it's, it's, it's too that's much alliteration. That's the beginning, of, that's in, the beginning in, in, of a limerick, in, I think. <laughs> Spent much time in Nantucket, has she? <laughs> um, so... So is she really? She's from Bologna? Yes, she is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is she, does she have a, a, a sexy accent? She does. She has a, a beautiful accent. She's got a beautiful everything. She's great. And she's um, handling everything like a trooper, you know, because sometimes I wind up doing sex scenes there on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and she's been really great about it. I, do, she, I get phone calls in the dressing room on the days that those scenes are happening. She doesn't say hello or anything. She just says, are you kissing that slut? <laughs> She says, are you, are you kissing her? Are you kissing that slut? Uh -huh. And I have to say, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't about know what you're talking about. Because otherwise I have to defend the honor of another woman. You know, that's, that's kind of a cliche that, that uh, you know, that a woman from a foreign country would be very passionate that way and, and jealous and fiery. But it's probably true, right? I think there's kind of an Italian thing going on there, yeah. Does she have the American slang down? She, well, she knows slut. <laughs> that's all you kind of really need to know. Exactly, yeah. She, it's odd, she speaks very, very good English, except people's names, it's been a, in our relationship, there's friends of mine that she can only identify by, she, she identifies them by assigning them animals. There's a friend of mine that's the bear. She says, this man has the face of a bear. Right. There's a, there's a famous athlete, a tennis player, she says, he is a dog. Look at this man's face, he is a dog. And I can, I say, remember when we had dinner at Bob's house, the two children, the bathroom caught on fire, right, the right. dog suffered cardiac arrest, it doesn't matter, I can show a photograph. She says, I don't know, I don't, the bear. Oh, why don't you say? This man is a bear. 
And does he really look like a bear or not really to you? Not to me, but, right. you know, that's not the issue. Right. She, I have to, so I've learned now, I have to say, would you, like to call, would you like to go with the bear and his wife to see the dog play tennis next week? <laughs> and this works. And I realize the problem isn't hers, it's mine. Right. You know? Right. Well, I just want feeling sorry for people that overhear you in a restaurant. <laughs> Would you like to go see Bear and Rabbit tomorrow? No. Probably think something's kind of wrong. Now, you, uh, you achieved some infamy uh, a while ago in the, in the world of Broadway. You walked out of a performance. Uh, was it, what, what play was it? There was a play called I Hate Hamlet. It was 11 years ago or so. Yeah, and you, you walked out during the per performance and it, it got a lot of attention. Tell yeah. me what happened. I was co-starring with a, a, an actor uh, uh, from, from, from across the pond there, Nickel Williamson, um, who was well known once upon a time. Um, I can't speak, you know, to a medical condition, you know, because the, the, you get into legal issues. Right. But he was the kind of guy who would sort of, you know, sway when he was standing there talking to you and slur his words and, and who, who sort of like smelled like a dive bar. But I, whether he was consuming drunk. He was alcohol a big old or drunk. not, I, yeah. I don't know. I can't say. Big old drunk, yeah. You know, big but drunk. there was an intricate sword drunken fight guy. at big, one point. Big drunken guy. <laughs> you keep doing that. That's drunken. good. That's good. Yeah. Big drunken slob. And this guy. Probably not the hell. Right, exactly. This, big this drunken guy, mess. This actor. He hauled off and he reared back and he swung, you know, Andy Roddick backhand as hard as he could and smacked me on the ass with the sword. With so, a re and it's not a stage sword would still hurt, right? It, it was just three pieces of three three feet of steel. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't sharpened or anything. But um, so I just kept going to the door and you know I said I had enough. I said goodbye to the producers and I left the show. During the show, it, so anyone yeah, watching yeah. the show just saw you get sort of hit Smacked. in the in the ass and yeah. you just walk off. Yeah, that's what they said. And then. Uh, this horrible drunken man was on stage uh, alone. Alone. He made a little speech. He said someone's missed a few parries and become embarrassed and left the stage, which is a terribly unprofessional thing to do. And he kind of staggered his way off stage and they brought the curtain down. And the understudy finished the performance and finished the run. Right. Um, my dad called me the next day to say there was a big article in the New York Times. Uh, two days later, actually, I thought it was just 500 people would have a good story. And I went to the newsstand to buy the New York Times, and there's uh, the New York Post says Broadway on the cover. And I thought, oh, I work on Broadway. Maybe it's about somebody I know. Right. And it said, Broadway swordplay turns real. Hamlet actor storms off stage after co-star whacks him in butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. So it's really... Did it's they have just, a cartoon of you getting stuck in the ass or something? It's it humiliating. They had a big picture of him and a little picture of me. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. But it's as good as pushing someone in front of a subway train. Right, right. Publicity speaking. Yeah, it got you a lot of publicity. It's a story now. Yeah. Now you're not, you don't care anymore. You, your bottom wasn't injured in any way. That's I don't even thing. exist anymore. I'm just a story. That's exactly. It. Well, all of us. All of us exist only in God's mind. Um, <laughs> got a little heavy there at the end, didn't it? It did, yeah. yeah. Sex and the City airs uh, Sunday nights at 9 on HBO. Evan, thank you so much for it's being here. Yeah, nice having you on the show. Evan Handler, everybody. We'll be right back with Damien Rice. Stick around. My next guest comes to us from Dublin, Ireland. He's here tonight with a song from his debut album, Oh, please welcome Damien Rice. Cold, cold. Great. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. That was fantastic. Damien Rice, everybody, we will take a break. We will be right back. Stick around. Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Why? Why? Let's party. with Conan O'Brien, TV to keep you up. <laughs> All right, 
everybody. That's our show. I do want to thank my guests. That was fantastic. Damien Rice. The album is O. Check it out. Very nice job. Thank you. Uh, big thanks to Lisa Marie Presley for stopping by. Of course, Evan Handler. Our thanks to him for being here. And, of course, Jimmy Levino and the Max Weinberg. Seven stage for last call with Carson Daly. Good night, everybody. Conan, you heartless son of a bitch. <laughs> Don't you know how Brian's father was killed? <laughs> no. He was a botanist who worked his whole life creating a man-eating plant called the Dale. And the day that they came to bloom, they ate him. He was eaten by blooming Dales. Blooming Dales! <laughs> That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Look, I'm really sorry about your dad, Brian. It's a tragedy, but believe me, I had no idea. It's okay, Conan. You didn't know. Well, I obviously can't say anything right tonight, so before I offend anybody else, I should probably just throw it a commercial. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, come on! Because I said commercial? What, was your father a commercial fisherman who crashed on the commercial islands and then got rescued and became an actor until he slipped and died on the set of a Doritos commercial? Yes! For God's sakes. I'm not going to say anything else. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> God, Pender, what's wrong with you? I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>